Okay, red lights on, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I wanted to remind people that we have the ASCII art gallery and the uh, doodles that you did with graphics for the graphics assignment. If you're interested, check it out, it's cool stuff. Uh, the question from last time had to do with the textbook and kind of what reading you do. So over half the class say they don't read the book. Uh, I guess it could be disappointing to me uh, in terms of sales. But uh, I guess what I would say is, you know, you don't have to read the textbook if it's not helpful. But I, I do think that uh, for, for people who uh, want a little more background or more examples, more better explanation, uh, I'm glad to see that there's a good chunk of people who uh, are using the book. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get started uh, with some Java. I'll talk about that later. So we were talking about file processing on Friday. Uh, this is chapter six material. I'm going to go through a significant example today that's going to constitute a medium hint for your programming assignment. It's almost too much of a hint. Uh, when my co-author Marty Stepp made this sample program and when I first saw it, I, I, w I almost got mad at him for making it too close to the homework. But I've kind of since come around. This is the challenging homework, so I think it's good to give you a little bit of a head start here uh, to think about some of the issues that are going to come up and try to get you on the right track for how you're going to do this homework. So uh, I used to pass out uh, a handout. I can't even do it even if I wanted to, but I used to have a numbered handout that showed information about this program. But even recently, I haven't been uh, passing it out. I've, but I've been putting it on the class web page. So there's a numbered handout, number 13, uh, that tells you about this program. So it shows you a couple of sample logs of execution. So it's showing you, it gives a little intro, and then it asks the user to type something. Here, you know, this is about movies. It's using the IMDb uh, movie database, uh, the 250 most popular movies of all time, you know, in the IMDb movie database. There's a, a feeling among uh, movie buffs that 1939 was the best year for movies ever, uh, and two movies came up. I was sad to see that Wizard of Oz dropped off this list. The last time I did this lecture, Wizard of Oz was still on the, on the list. And there's a lot of others I, I would have put on that list from 1939. But in any event, this is kind of, I, I, I went to IMDb last night to get the latest data, you know, so I'm using the, the latest IMDb data. And there's a couple of movies from 1939. So you can type in a year, uh, or you can type in uh, a bit of text. So here I typed in kill, and I got to kill a mockingbird and kill Bill volume one, or two movies that had kill in their title. So you can kind of give a little bit of a phrase or you can give a year and it searches you know, for things that match that. And it's showing you kind of what was the number from one to 250, what was its rating uh, and its title, and then I show the year in parentheses. So this is what our data file looks like. So uh, I've got this uh, imdb.txt data file here. I'm kind of showing you the first 25 lines of it here. The number one rated movie of all time is Shawshank Redemption. It has an average rating of 9.2, and it was made in 1994. So that's kind of what the first input line looks like. This is what the second input line looks like, and so forth. So that's what the file looks like. But you can see that we're presenting the data in a slightly different way. And so that's part of what we're going to talk about, is kind of you know, how to be processing the file, but then also how to have your program behave slightly differently in terms of what it shows. Uh, so uh, anyway, let's kind of switch over uh, to this program. So uh, we saw how to do the throws file not found exception and to open up a file to read from. So this is reading from that imdb.txt file. What we talked about in Friday's lecture is what I would call token-based processing, where we used methods like next int, next double, and next that would read one token's worth of input. That's one style of file processing. One of the things that I pointed out that's really important to understand about token-based processing is it ignores line breaks. So we saw that it would skip ahead, you know, several lines. It would skip blank lines and kind of go to a later line of the file to find a token if there is one. So that's one style of processing. But there are going to be files like this imdb.txt where the line breaks are meaningful. 
it's important that that's line one, and that that's line two, and that that's line three, that the, each, you know, each line has information that's associated with a single movie. You don't want to merge the lines somehow, and that's what token-based processing would tend to do. So there's another style of processing, line-based processing, uh, that uh, where instead of using the, these other three methods, you use next line, and you read an entire line of input at a time. Uh, and then actually what we're going to see today is kind of a mixture of these things. How do you, how do, you do token-based processing and line-based processing uh, for a single file? So we'll get there. We'll talk about that. Let me uh, just write a basic uh, line-based loop. So uh, we saw in Friday's lecture that you, you, there were these has methods, has next. And so we could say while the input uh, has a next line, if that's what we're going to be calling is next line, then that would be the test we perform. We can say string line is input dot next line. So we'll read in a line of text. And suppose right now all we do is system dot out dot printlin the line. So we'll just echo it. Uh, we'll just you know, echo back the line that we're seeing. So uh, we can compile and run this program. So this should just be reading all 250 lines of the imdb.txt. There's the line to 250, you know, that shows the one that's at the bottom of that list. So this was just doing a very simple echo. Uh, it's not a very useful pro program. I mean, I could have opened up the file to kind of see that. But even, even simple echoing has some interesting variations to it. Like what if I did two uppercase, you know, so I didn't, I didn't echo the line itself, but an uppercase version of the line. And what if I threw in a system.out.println to make a blank line uh, after each line? So now what I'm doing is I'm not echoing the original file, or at least not in its original form. What I'm doing is I'm converting all the lines to uppercase, and double spacing the output. So uh, it's, a, it's a little variation. I mean, if you have a, a basic structure for echoing, then it's not hard to have a variation of echoing where it's printing all the lines in uppercase uh, and with the, the, double, the double spacing. Uh, so anyway, the, the, that's kind of a, a basic idea of line processing. Um, what we're gonna do then uh, is we want to write a program that's going to be prompting the user, it gives a little intro, this program will allow you to search, blah, 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 and then it prompts the user for a search phrase. So this program is gonna not just be reading from a file, it's also gonna be reading from the user, from the console. So we're gonna need another scanner. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of scanners in this program, but we're gonna make a scanner console, which is a new scanner that's connected to system.in. Remember, for each scanner, you tell it its source of input. So remember the console scanner gets tied to system.in. So it may be confusing that there's multiple scanners. You just have to keep track of it. Remember that there's multiple scanners and talk to the right scanner you know, uh, when you're gonna do some operation. So then we presumably do the intro. I mean, you know, the, the, I'm not gonna go ahead and type in those lines, uh, but it'll be in the version that I post on the calendar for today. But then we would do a system.out.print of you know, uh, what, was the, what was the wording that was used? Search phrase. So we can ask for a search phrase from the user, and we can say string phrase equals console dot. Now, if we could say next, that's, uh, that's the token-based way to do it. The problem with that is that it would restrict the user that they can only do one token's worth of input. So if they wanted to search for a two-word phrase, for example, they couldn't do that. So it's actually a little nicer to do next line, you know, to kind of let the, uh, take a whole line of input from the user, and that way they can have, say, two-word uh, search phrases that they would use, that they, that they would be using. Then what do we do? Okay. Uh, well, let me do something here. I want to do a little bit of kind of planning ahead here, which is I don't want to have everything in main. I want to have kind of some of this stuff in another method. So what I have in mind, so let's take a look. It, you know, when, when I typed in 1939, you know, the first line it found was line 165. That means that it looked at 164 other lines that didn't have 1939 in the line. 
So it kind of had scanned through and, and skipped them because they, they weren't you know, uh, important lines. So I want us to think about writing a method that I'm gonna call find, that, that will find that relevant line, the one that would have the search phrase that we're looking for. So we'll, we'll kind of come back to this in a minute and we'll figure out what we're gonna do here. So I mean, I kind of, I'm trying to, to plan for having main be somewhat shorter than it would be otherwise. So I wanna have a public static method called find that's going to do the, the work of searching the file uh, for this appropriate line. So uh, then how am I going to connect these to each other? Well, what I have in mind is that when it finds a relevant line of the file, you know, in this case, the one that has 1939 in it, I'm going to have it return the entire line of input. I'm going to have it return that line of input so that what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say string uh, line is equal to find. Uh, so, and then we'll do you know, an appropriate thing with that. For now, how about if we just say system.out.println, uh, that particular line. So what is find going to need in order to do its work? Well, what is it searching through? It's searching through the the input file, the, uh, you know, so it needs access to that input scanner, for sure, to, to know where to look. And what else does it need? Well, it needs to know the phrase that it's searching for. Normally, in an interactive class with people here, I'd ask for suggestions, and people are pretty good about kind of coming up with those as suggestions. But so then that means that find is going to return a string, uh, and it's going to be passed a scanner uh, input and a string phrase. This technique of making methods, very, very important because you want to, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're about to spend time talking about the details of how to do the finding operation. There's going to be a fair number of details just in getting that right. Uh, but then there's also going to be details that we have to include here. And I keep talking about this idea over and over again, but kind of managing all those details so that you don't get lost, you know, that your head doesn't explode with too many details at one time. It's going to be important for us to be able to focus on the finding operation at first. We'll do that. And then once we have a finding operation that works, we can just think of it as, well, I just call it. You know, I don't worry about the details. I just call it whenever I want to. And so now I can kind of structure my other code while ignoring those details. Again, very, very much the essence of what programmers do. That's how we make a complex program manageable, is by breaking it up into methods like this. And it's going to be particularly important for your homework six, because this is a longer program than you've written before. So it's going to be really, really important to be thinking about methods like this that you can split off and write as kind of self-contained little things. OK, so what do we do? This one was reading in lines, and it was printing them out and, and double spacing them. That's not what we're going to want to do. What are we going to want to do with those different lines? Well, we're doing a search, right? We're, we're, we're going through the file. And uh, you know what presumably what happened is that we'd look here and we'd say, is this one a 1939 movie? No. Is this one a 1939 movie? No. Is this one a 1939 movie? No. I mean, what was the first one? It was 165. So way down here, 165. Uh, when it gets to this line right here, it's going to say, is that a 1939 movie? And here the answer is yes. So it's supposed to find that line uh, and return it back to main. By the way, that, this is a good thing to kind of write down first, I mean, write down as well in terms of commenting. Uh, searches the given input for the next occurrence of the given phrase. I'm kind of describing how, what, what the input is and what the phrase is here. Uh, returning the line uh, uh, if there is one. So that's kind of what we, what, how we would describe what we're doing. So what do we want to do? We want to read, 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 read a bunch of lines. And in a lot of cases, we don't do anything. You know, we just skip it because it's not a relevant line. So, but what we're going to want to do is have some kind of an if that says, well, if it's a relevant line, how do we know it's relevant? That's not a simple question. How do, how, you know, how do we figure out whether this is a, a line that we care about? 
Uh, I'm going to do a relatively simple test for this. You might have noticed it on the cheat sheet for the midterm, if you took a look at that, that the, that the string class has a method called contains. So I can have a little method here where I say, if line dot contains that phrase, then I can do something special with it. So uh, there is a method called contains. Um, it's not going to be that simple for your homework. I mean, I'm not giving you all of the homework solution. You know, we're just kind of talking about some things that are relevant ideas. So, you know, don't assume that things are as simple when you go to do it with the homework. So uh, you might have a little more work to do than we have to do here. Once we've found a line that contains that phrase that we're searching for, we're ready to return. We know the answer that we're looking for. And one of the ideas that I mentioned, I believe it was a week ago when I was going over some sample midterm problems, is I kind of emphasized this idea that returns can occur anywhere inside of a program. And a return stops whatever's going on from continuing. So we're in a loop. And this is going to break out of the loop. It's going to end the method and kind of go back to main, returning the line that we found. So uh, once we've found something that contains that phrase, we can stop reading the file, break out of the loop, return back to main, and kind of pass back that, uh, you know, find will pass back that value that it found, storing it in a variable there. So we want to, that's what we want. So we want to, we want to return if we find a phrase that contains, I mean, a line that contains that phrase. The compiler gives an interesting error message. It says missing return. What do you mean? There's a return right here. It's, uh, why do you say it's missing? Well, and you know where it's pointing is it's basically saying, what if you get to right here, what are you supposed to return? Is it possible that you get to that line of code? Yeah, it is possible that you get to that point. Because you might go through the, the input. Uh, there might not be any input, for one thing. It might be an empty file. Or it might be that you go through it and you find that none of the lines contain this phrase. So you could very well reach this point right here uh, not having found anything, so not having returned anything. So what would you return in this case? Um, there's a lot of ideas. Some people kind of think of returning not found or something like that. Um, it's not necessarily a bad idea. I'm a little wary of using a string like that because <laughs> Somehow I think of things like, what if, the, what if there was a movie called Not Found? <laughs> or, you know, uh, they're, they're kind of simpler things that you could do. And we've seen the idea of an empty string. And I kind of like the idea of returning an empty string. I mean, what you really like, in a way, is you'd like a weird in-between where you could say, well, the return type of this method is string when it finds something, and it's Boolean when it doesn't. Because you kind of like to return a false, something that indicates I didn't find it. But there's no way to have a hybrid like that that sometimes returns a string and sometimes return a false. So we've got to just have some arbitrary idea of what represents false for us. So I'm going to decide that an empty string is going to represent that. And that's absolutely something that you would comment. Uh, returns an empty string if not found. Something like that. So you, know, you would want to mention that uh, as a description of how the thing behaves. Let's try compiling it. Maybe I'll scooch this up a little because we're going to run it a few times and run it. And so how about if I ask for 1939, it finds gone with the wind. That's great. It found that line, that, that 165th line of the file. Uh, that's not the, the format we want for the output, but it's good that it found it. Um, let's try running this. Now the other sample execution. So that was 1939. The second sample execution I typed in kill and the first thing it should find is to kill a mockingbird. And it doesn't find to kill a mockingbird. How come it doesn't find to kill a mockingbird? Well, I think you can see why. It's the 119th line of the input file and it's got kill with a capital K. Oh. So you could come back here and you could say all right, user, you have to type in kill with a capital K in order for it to work. We don't usually want to do that. You know, uh, this would be a case, I think, where you'd want to find it no matter what combination of upper and lower case letters the user had typed. 
So uh, we want to modify our find method so that it ignores case. You know, and that's a, that's a good thing to mention as well. Ignores case uh, in uh, looking uh, for the phrase. You know, that's a good thing to mention too. Well, uh, it would be nice if there was something called contains ignore case. There isn't a contains ignore case. So we have to kind of do something different. Um, well, uh, how about if we took the line and we converted it to lower case? I've talked about that as a programmer's trick, is that you kind of change everything, say, to lower case as a way of looking for matches. So we could try that. Uh, and if I try running it and I say kill, uh, then it does find it. It, uh, it comes up with to kill a mockingbird there. Uh, if I run it again, and what if I happen to type kill with a, with a capital K this time? Now it doesn't find it. So it's not ignoring case. Now it's kind of requiring all lower case, which isn't quite what we wanted to have either. Um, when I first mentioned this idea and I talked about the programmer's trick, I said what you do is if you're going to compare two strings, you should turn both of the strings into the same case. Like say, have both of them be lowercase versions, you know, and then compare those two lowercase versions of the strings. So instead of comparing the line against phrase, we could compare it against phrase dot to lower case. So uh, we lowercase the line, we lowercase the phrase, and that way they'll be in a standard case. So we could kind of compile and run. And if I look for kill, it finds it. And if I look for K-I-L-L -L with some weird you know, capitalization, it still finds it. So that's better. That's kind of, that's, that would be kind of a way of dealing with the, the case issue is two, both of the different strings are, are turned into lowercase when we go to compare them. Um, but now there's a, a different problem that I would say, which is we got rid of, the, you know, we kind of screwed up the title. You know, the, the title is, the capitalization can matter. People care about capitalization. So, you know, we don't want to convert the line uh, into, a, into a, a lowercase version of the line. So, you know, what you could do is something like this. You could say uh, string line one is input dot next line and then string line two is, you know, line one dot two lowercase. There's a lot of things that you could do. I mean, basically, we don't want to do this here, you know. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this from here. We want to leave the line in the case that it had right here. But then what we want to compare is not the original line, but here you'll notice I'm going to do a paste because I had just done a cut. I'm pasting in the two lower case here. And this was the kind of thing I had done. I showed it in the interactions pane that I'm going to ask the line to make a lower case version of itself. And then I'm going to ask that lower case version of the line whether it contains the lower, a lower case version of the phrase. So it gets a little you know, busy, a little complicated, this line. So, I mean, if you introduced an extra variable in there, like a line one and a line two or something, that would be an okay thing to do. Uh, but now we'd be able to return the original line, uh, even though we're, uh, we'll make sure uh, kill is still getting us to kill a mockingbird. Now with the correct capitalization, and if we run it again, if we give it K-I-L-L, uh, that's, that's coming up with that line as well. Okay, uh, well that's pretty good start on uh, what we're going to do for the finding operation and the code for that in main. Um, but it's printing out the information. It's just showing us the line. It's just showing us the original input line. Uh, and if we look at what we had here, this thing was printing out a little header here, and then under the header, it was kind of showing us the different movies that matched. So. We're going to want to do that over here. We're going to want to uh, do something like this, where we're going to say uh, system.out.println of the header. So I'm going to paste what I just copied from over there. And now, it may not be obvious, but I'm using tab characters here. Uh, and this may sound odd, but I, I think actually it's clearer. When you're used to using tab characters to line things up, 
using a backslash T in your, in your text is easier for, programs to un, uh, for programmers to understand that there's two tab characters involved there. So that what, what it's doing for the output is it's printing you know, its rank, and then there's a tab, and it's printing its rating, and then there's a tab, and then there's the title. So uh, it may look a little weird because you're not used to using backslash T, but when you get used to using backslash T, that's actually kind of a, a, a nicer way of seeing it. So let me print out uh, the little header there. I'm gonna make a copy of it for a reason that'll become clear in a second. So I'm not gonna be able to use system.out.println. I'm gonna have to kind of do a different print command because I want to print it out in a different way than what the line looks like. I want the 8.2 to come second. I want the 119 to come first. I want the year to be at the end in parentheses. So I need to rearrange this line uh, in order to match the output format that I've been asked to do. So that means I'm going to have to figure out how to, how to deal with the stuff inside of a line. So, um, what I'm going to say here is that I want a custom print command uh, to print the line. So I'm going to want to have a public static uh, void print command that's given a line to print out. Uh, and uh, let me uh, paste in, uh, I, I'm pasting in that header just to remind myself that it's a rating uh, I mean, that it's the number followed by a rating followed by a title with the year in parentheses. I'm just, I'm just including that uh, to be helpful to me in remembering what to do inside this method. Well, before we go to do this, let me pause for a moment and talk about what, why we're doing what I'm doing here and kind of overall strategy for all of this. Uh, chapter six makes this very clear, but apparently not everybody's reading the book, so this is important for me to kind of describe you might say, why can't we just do the, the token-based processing? Why do we have to be doing something different than the token-based processing? Well, how would you process something like this in a token-based way? You could read in this token and read in, you know, and know that it's a, a rating, that that's a year, and that, that, that that's a, a rank, you know, you know, that's number 154. And then I could see various tokens that are part of a, of a uh, of a title, but how would I know where the title ends? Well, you could say, well, when you see a number, you know that if you see a number afterwards, well, then that means that, that that's the end of the title. You know that, that because that next token is a number, that can't be part of the title. But look, even in the simple examples that I ran here, Kill Bill, volume one, volume one, that's a number. In the middle of the title, there's a number. So, you know, if you try to say the number's gonna signal when I'm done, that's just not gonna work. So here, it's very important to distinguish the entire lines of input represent information about a single movie. So we clearly want to do line-based processing here. Read one line at a time. Line, 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 line. And our find method does that. It reads one line at a time until it finds an appropriate line. And then we're going to get to the point where we want to do this custom print method. And what we now want to do, we've got a line but now we want to do token-based processing. So now we'd like to do things like reading in this 8.2 as a token or reading in this 1962 as a token. So let me take a minute. Uh, I want to do a bit of a, a, a detour. So uh, import java.util.star. I'm going to make a, what, oh, I had an extra dot in there. Import java.util.star. And let me make a scanner here that I'm going to call data, which is a new scanner. So we've talked about this idea that inside the parentheses, you specify a source of input. And I talked about the idea of a faucet. You know, you can connect a faucet up to all sorts of different things. As long as it's a source of water, you know, the faucet uh, is going to work. So there's a lot of different sources you could have for the water. Well, there's a lot of different sources for a scanner. So we've seen console scanners that are reading from the, from the interactive console. We've seen file-based scanners that are reading from a file. Well, another kind of scanner you can make is one that reads from a string. So suppose you had something like, you know, uh, 39.8, 407, and hello. 
suppose that that was going to be a string that you had, uh, then that sets up a scanner, and I want to show you that scanner. So uh, I've told you that it's a plumbing model. You know, the idea is that there's pipes and there's data flowing through the pipes. It's as if we had put these, this information into the pipe, you know? So it's, you know, that, that, and then the faucet is hooked up to the pipe. And so if we take a look, if I drag out data, uh, remember we saw this before when we were trying to observe a scanner that it has this lazy input issue. So it's not, it hasn't actually looked for the data just yet. So we can force it to wake up by asking it something like, hey data, do you have a next int? You know, would be a question we could ask it. And that forces it to wake up. You notice, boom, it got filled in here. So we can see a 39.8, a space, and there's 407, and then the hello. It said false. It's kind of saying that that next token that we have there can't be read as an int because a 39, the decimal point, the 39.8. But we could say data.next double to read, you know, the double part of what's, uh, what's in that uh, string. Uh, and notice it kind of scoots along the way it normally does. It gives us the 39.8 and goes to the next bit of white space. I could do data.nextInt, and it's going to read in that int and go to the next little bit of white space there. And then to read in the hello, I mean, well, or what if I tried data.nextInt again? You know, then that fails because of an input mismatch, because that token can't be interpreted as an int. But I can say data.next to read it as a string. So uh, this is a string-based scanner, you know, a scanner that has information from a single string. And so I'm going to use that idea, and basically this is a pattern that you can use for processing many, many different input files. It's that here I'm doing it inside of the print command, but I'm going to make a scanner that I'm going to call data, which is a new scanner that I'm going to connect to that line, that line of text. So um, basically, if you, if, you, uh, if you use this approach, the way, that, the way that we process an input file like this is we read entire lines of input at a time. So there's a scanner that's connected to the file that's reading a line, a line, a line, a line. But when we find a relevant line, when find kind of returns a relevant line, we're going to pull apart that line uh, by making a brand new scanner. So, uh, if we find this line like this one right here, then we take that string and we put its information, that line's worth of information, into a little mini scanner that's got one line's worth of information. And now we can do token-based processing and don't have to worry about it going into a new line or something because we know that it ends with the end of the title. So this one, since it's, it's guaranteed to be a single line of the file, that's going to work just fine. So anyway, this is a very important pattern that we use for file processing, is reading line by line by line by line from the file. And then the, the individual lines we want to process, we make a scanner for each of those lines. And we're going to process it in a token-based way. So uh, I can say data is a new scanner for that line. Uh, and then what do I see in the line? The very first thing that's there is the IMDB rating. And it's a double. So I'm going to say double rating equals data.next double. So I'm going to read that part of it in, the rating. And then what comes next is the year. We do expect you to make the distinction between data that will be a double and data that will be an int. So we want you to be very careful. This would be int data. Int year is data.next int. We don't have partial years uh, in the data like this. And then there's a rank, you know, 1 to 250. Where, where do you rank on the list? And that's also an int. So that's going to be data.nextint. So I can read those three little bits of input. Uh, that still leaves the title. So we've got to talk about how to process the title. But let me kind of get started here that we know that what we want to be doing uh, is, a, is eventually we're doing a print lens. I mean, I'll begin with that. But you know, I, I reminded myself here with the header. Remember the line that we wrote for the, for the, for the heading? Is that the first thing to have is, is the number, which is the rank. So that should come first. Then what do we want? Then we have a tab to separate it from the rating. 
So we can have that next. Uh, and now the year is not supposed to be uh, uh, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a column like the other things. It's supposed to be at the end in parentheses. I'm going to do this, though. I'm going to do a tab for now, because we know we want to have a tab and then the title. But for now, I'm going to kind of leave that off. We'll, we'll do the title in a second. But uh, that's, that's kind of the way we would, we would start our line. Uh, if I, yeah, we can end the old interactions. If I compile and run this version of it uh, with 1939, I'm getting uh, movie number 165 on the list with a rating of 8.1, which is good. And it's probably got a tab character there that's got me positioned ready to do the title. So that's good. It's kind of, it's, it's printed out those first two things and it's using the tabs to line up the columns the way we wanted it to. Uh, but we don't want this to be a print line, you know, that's just the beginning part of the line. So normally I'd ask for suggestions, how do we process the title? Uh, remember that what the title is going to look like is that it's going to be a bunch of text here to the end of the line. Now, let me admit something, but then also kind of go in a slightly different direction. This is a place where it would be potentially convenient to use a call on next line. Although, even, you know, the whole, the, I mean, to kind of read the, the whole rest of the line. Although there's an interesting issue, a little problem that would come up if we tried to do that. Um, so let me say that anyone who had an instinct to kind of do a call on next line to get all the rest of the line, that's not a bad idea in general, but I give a rule of thumb in chapter six, and I really ask you to follow this rule. I think that it's gonna help you keep your sanity. Uh, as I said, there's a, even if you try it here, there's a confusing thing that comes up that you'd have to understand. And so if you, don't, if you want to avoid confusion, you want to avoid potential problems, my rule of thumb is to always process a given scanner either in a token-based way or a line-based way, but not a mixture. So we have a scanner that we used here in the find method where we're reading line, 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 line. So we're always processing in a line-based way. Here, we've made a different scanner that's got one line's worth of text, and I don't want to do a call on next line here. I want to use all token-based processing. That's kind of my rule of thumb. I mentioned it in chapter six. If you want to kind of preserve your own sanity, I think you're going to find that's the way that works better is to always kind of stick to uh, you know, any given scanner. If you're doing token base, next double, next int, next, then the kind of calls that we want to use here are going to be calls on, uh, oops, yeah, uh, on data.next. So we're going, to, we're going to do token based. So we're going to read one word at a time. So we're going to be able to read to kill a mockingbird. So next, 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 next is what we're going to do. So how about if we do our classic thing while data dot has next. So while there's another token left to read, we can say, uh, well, you know, we want to do a call on data dot next. We could store it in a variable, but uh, it's actually, you know, not that hard to know what we're supposed to do with it. We're just supposed to print it. Uh, let me do it in the simple way first, and I think you guys are going to realize uh, what's, what's wrong with this. But let's, you know, we'll get there. Uh, let's go ahead and compile and run this version. And so if we do 1939, uh, it did, oh, uh, that was uh, uh, gone with the wind. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, it was kill versus that. Let's do the kill one, and we'll see to kill a mockingbird. Uh, and, you know, it's all squished together. So obviously we don't just want the words. We need something like adding in a space to space them out. So let's try compiling and running this version. And if we give it kill, now we're getting to kill a mockingbird. But, and that's almost what, the, what this one shows. But it's the to kill a mockingbird is supposed to have the year in parentheses afterwards. So uh, we read in the year up here. So we can just include that in the print line, that we can include parentheses and year and right paren. And you might wonder, do I need a leading space here? Well, this thing's always doing a trailing space. So when it goes to do Mockingbird, it will have put a space afterwards. And then this just, you know, so we don't need an extra space in here to be able to do the parenthesized year. Uh, let's go ahead and try that kill. And now it's kind of lining up right. 
that's giving, I mean, giving us the, the, uh, the, the, uh, not the rank, the rating, uh, and the title with the year in parentheses afterwards. So that's, that's kind of what I had in mind uh, for the output here. Now, it's only doing one line's worth, so we've got to fix that so that it does multiple lines, but we'll get there in a second. Let me just kind of, I mean, so this, this program will be posted on the calendar for today. This print method is really important to understand because understanding the idea that it's given a line of input to process and it makes a scanner and then it does token-based processing on that scanner so that it can do whatever combinations of things it wants, next, next int, next double. It can pull it apart in whatever way it wants. In this case, we read in the different bits of the input and we reformatted it so that the output matched what we were asked to do in terms of the, of the output. Okay, uh, well let's go back to main, and now the fact that it's only doing one line. Um, there's a, a question that comes up here. So, how, so when we're doing kill, for example, obviously it should, you know, when, it, when it's reading the input file, it'll return a line that's for this movie, uh, and then it'll return a line for this movie. So we want to do find at least twice, you know, because we want to get the two movies that match, you know, the phrase that we gave. But if you think about it, we actually want to call find three times because we would need to do an extra call in case there's a third line. What if there was a fourth line, a fifth line, a sixth line? We want to keep calling find until it gets to that case where it ends up returning an empty string because it says it didn't find it. So we want an extra call on find. So if there are two movies to be found, we make three calls on find. If there were eight movies to be found, we do nine calls on find. What does that sound like? One more call on find versus the, the, uh, the processing of it, the printing of it. It's a classic fence post, classic fence post type problem. So we can do the classic fence post solution where we do a find before a loop, and then inside of the loop we'll have while something is true, we're going to print that line and then we're going to do another call on find. Line equals find input comma phrase. So uh, this is classic fence post solution. We do the first call on find before the loop. We do extra calls inside of the loop. And then we, we reverse the order. You know, this is the post and wire and so forth. We do the printing and then the find. So that that way we begin with a find and we end with a find. So we get an extra find relative to the printing. So what would be our test? How do we know that we're done? Well, it's when we get that line that was the empty string. So you might say something like, well, line is not equal to an empty string. Don't do that. Remember, we've talked about strings. Always, always, always use dot equals when you're doing strings. So we could do dot equals, quote, quote, but we don't want to know whether it equals it. We want to know whether it's not equal to it. So that would be kind of a way of writing it. I'm going to do something that uh, I think is a little bit simpler, which is we know that strings have a length method. So I could say while well, the line length is greater than zero, because that's, that's a special property that, em that empty strings have is that they have a length of zero. It's the only string that has a length of zero. So I could say while, while the line length is greater than zero, uh, we'd keep going. And so I could kind of run this, and if I give it a uh, kill, uh, it'll... Uh, kind of give me two different answers here. Um, there are uh, other issues. I mean, one of them is what happens if I ran this? How about let's try? I wonder. I don't know if there's any movies that match Oz. Because uh, I told you the Wizard of Oz had kind of dropped off. No, there's no match at all. Well, I kind of think it should do something special when you do that, you know. Uh, at least it shouldn't print out a heading. I mean, why does it do a heading if there's not going to be uh, anything that it's going to do there? So uh, what I want to do is after it does this first find, I'm going to say if line.length is greater than zero. So I may not want to do this, uh, this code in here uh, if it didn't find anything. So I can kind of do that and then I'd want to go ahead and cut this from here and put it inside the if so that I'm only going to print that out uh, if it actually found something. So if the very first call on find comes back with an empty string, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do something like this. Um, in the 
final version that I have of this. Uh, well, I guess we have time that we could go ahead and throw this in here. Uh, remember that uh, what it showed in here is it showed how many matches there were. So we can do counting as we go along here. We can basically say int count is equal to uh, zero, and what we can say is uh, that we print out our line, uh, read in another one, and increment a counter, and then what we can say is system.out.println count matches. Uh, so let's see, if we go ahead and compile and run this, we go back to 1939, let's say, and it says that there are two matches. And we could be testing on the case where there's zero matches and so forth, just to make sure. Um, I'm a little disappointed with IMDB. They, they, I think they have kind of a core group of people who rate movies. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older, so I tend to like the classic movies, like from 1939. But, you know, so a lot of us think 1939 had a lot of great movies. But you can kind of see a certain prejudice with the IMDB database that I think is getting greater over time. Like if I ask for 2019 movies, you know, it turns out that it thinks there are seven movies from 2019 that were among the top 250 movies of all time. And I kind of don't think that that's going to be uh, listed that way 30 years from now. So I kind of think that those seven won't make, won't, won't last the test of time uh, as they get rated, you know, when they're a little bit older. So anyway, that's, this is an example. Uh, the, I'll, I will put this on the calendar for today. Uh, it's a great uh, sample program to study, to get ready for doing the homework assignment. I want to uh, show you your programming assignment executing. I don't want to show you the code. I just want to kind of show you what it does when it runs to give you an idea of, what's, uh, of, of what it does. Um, let me mention that the graphical output is kind of not quite ready for prime time. So uh, uh, wait until, uh, give us a couple of days. On Wednesday, I'll make an announcement about kind of the status of what's going on with the graphical output. But we're trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to let people check their output to make sure that it's right. So that little part of, you know, compared to web file is not going to give you reliable results right now. So I, I, I'll explain on Wednesday, tell you a little more on Wednesday. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, run the program so I can show you what it does. This program allows you to search through the data from the Social Security Administration to see how popular a particular name has been since 1880. And so it reads a data file that looks like this, that has names in it, uh, Leander, for example, uh, Leander male. It's a combination of a name uh, and, uh, and biological sex. Uh, that's what the Social Security Administration records. And kind of how popular this was, was it the a uh, one means it was the, the, the top name that particular, the very most popular name that year. So a zero means that it wasn't on the list, that it, that it didn't get included. So uh, a lot of people, when they run this program, they kind of wonder about their own name. You know, so I might say, tell me about Stuart, you know, uh, male. Uh, so I'm going to say, tell me about that information. I mean, I could look up the line in here and see the numbers, but I think the program you're going to write is a whole lot nicer because it gives a graphical representation of this. So it's kind of showing all the way back to 1880, this is how the name Stuart has uh, varied in popularity over time. So uh, it was most popular uh, in the 1950s, you know, it kind of reached its peak in 1960, two years after I was born. So I, you know, I don't know <laughs> whether I had anything to do with it, but or maybe my parents just made an unwise choice, choice because it's been all downhill ever since then. They said it's become less and less popular. So this is going to be your task: is to be looking through the file to find an appropriate match, and then graphing the resulting, uh, uh, you know, a, a sequence of, of values here. So it's, it's an interesting program, you know, to to run. You get some uh, uh, interesting. Um, results here. So let me come back over here and let's run the program again. Um, some names have changed in popularity over time, like if you look up Adolf uh, and kind of see what the popularity for Adolf is, it became a little bit less popular over time. It kind of had a precipitous drop off. Uh, if I run it again, you know, it's in, it, you might find it interesting if you have grandparents or great grandparents, you know, with an unusual, what seems like an unusual name, you could kind of ask them for their name, uh, type it in, you know, Agnes, for example, uh, as a woman's name, 
uh, you know, Agnes, who knows an Agnes? Well, there used to be a lot of Agneses, you know, 50th most popular, 41st most popular name here, and then it kind of dropped off, so not so much recently. Uh, there's always interesting questions about uh, entertainers. So, for example, Britney Spears, uh, I just have to remember how she spells it, uh, you can kind of look at the pattern for her. She was born in 81. I think that this is a case where you have to say that it's not that people got, thought that Britney was a great name because of Britney Spears, it's more that she had that name because it was a popular name at the time. So, you know, when she was born, it was popular, it's kind of losing popularity. You know, the, the, the one, an effect that seems more likely to be an actual effect from a, from a, uh, a, a star, there was a guy named Rock Hudson uh, who was a big star in the 1950s. And there's a little spike in Rock Hudson names in the 1950s. You could look up biblical names, you know, so you could see how uh, Paul has fared as a name. And you kind of see it becoming more popular at the end of the 19th century. There was a, a revival of Christianity at the end of the 19th century. And then, you know, pretty strong through a lot of the 20th and then falling off somewhat recently, not quite so popular recently. All right, well, I wanted to show you that just so you could see what your program looks like. As I said, uh, the, if you go to the option here, file compared to web file, that's not quite ready for you to use yet. I will tell you about more about it on Wednesday.